2023 is an important year for Turkey, as we all know, uh, centenary of the, of the Republic, but it's also an important year for the BIA because we are celebrating our 75th anniversary. I think that those of you in the audience here have already seen the banners, uh, but 75 years in Ankara we are. Rather than one big celebratory event, uh, we thought that it would be nicer to have a variety of events throughout the year celebrating the research that is, being, that is taking place at the Institute. The calendar will soon be available on the website and invitations will of course be sent out as ever uh, via uh, the social media and also for those of you on the list, you will also get the, uh, the invitations. So the, among the events, there is a conference on sustainable water management, an event celebrating the her heritage management projects of the BIA, a conference of, on the Konya Plain and much more. So I hope that you will keep an eye on the BIA website or subscribe to our mailing list or even become a member. I also hope that you will enjoy the book launch today. And therefore, I would like to invite the host of today, Dr. Ushilai Gursu. Thank you very much, Lut. So uh, thank you so much all for being here and for being on Zoom. We have great attendance and we really missed to be together in one room, although it still feels a little bit uh, different because we, it has been a while that we didn't have a full house, but we had started our hybrid lecture. So this is another hybrid lecture and uh, bear with us if we have a couple of uh, technical problems because this is also something new. And we have a great panel and we will be discussing a book called Pisidia Heritage Trail, hiking through ancient sites and highlands of the Western Taurus Mountains, Turkey. I'm looking towards there because there is a great poster which makes you feel like go and walk the trail. So that is the aim of uh, this evening. We are going to try to bring Pisidia to life and try to give you the actually the emotions that we had while we were doing this project more than anything else, because we are all different we are all coming from different angles. We are all approaching the, this project from different angles. But I think one thing that we have all in common with this wonderful panel here is our love and passion for Pisidia. So the aim is going to be convey this passion and where it comes from to you uh, who have been kind enough to show up this evening. So um, this book is obviously about Pisidia, an ancient region north of Antalya, Sparta and Burdur. And um, um, while we were trying to uh, do this project, actually we have seen how the landscape has changed over the years. And I have to confess that this book took quite a lot of time to finish. It's on me, uh, but uh, we are very proud of the result. Uh, however, this also gave us the opportunity to see, or maybe our, our hearts were broken at some point because the landscape was changing very dramatically due to constructions like big dams and new roads, you name it, mines, or uh, also illicit digging. So our idea to create such a trail and to create such a project was to be able to preserve this landscape which invoked such emotions in us. So I am joined uh, by three wonderful panelists this evening. Uh, Dr. Lutger Vandeput, who did our uh, introductory speech, is our director, and she's also a classical archaeologist, and she worked in Pisidia. So she will be chair uh, sharing her experiences and how we started this whole project. I'm again checking if there are any complaints about the sound. Says E, there will be Shayo. No, 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 not yet. Şey, henüz değil. <gülüyor> Sadece sesi iyi olup olmadığını sormaya çalıştım. Tamam. Uh, and also I'm joined by uh, Ümit Işın, uh, who is an archaeologist and a professional tour guide. And he owns a company called Equinox, which is a local company and that we partnered with while we were doing this uh, project because Ümit knows every stone in the region. And you think I'm exaggerating, I am not. <laughs> and uh, it's really my, my pleasure that uh, he came all the way from Antalya to join us this evening. So we will be hearing from Umit as well. 
And not last, uh, last but not least, we are joined by Michele Massa, uh, who is an, a landscape archaeologist who has experience in GIS and mapping. And as you can imagine, we had uh, to um, prepare a lot of maps and do a lot of recordings for the project. And those were done due to the meticulous work of Michele. And we did the field work all together. There were other names that joined us and I will be mentioning them throughout my talk, not at this stage, because now what I want to do is, uh, I, I talked about you know, Kisidia being this wonderful landscape. However, you might not take my word for it. So there is a three and a half video, three and a half minutes long video, which is going to take all of you to Pisidia, and then we come back and we meet in the same room. Şimdi videoyu gösterebiliriz. It's a pity because that when the um, last scene was gone, that was the sponsors. So <laughs> <laughs> that is important. <laughs> okay, so I am going to thank the sponsors because that was also a reminder for me to thank the sponsors so that I don't forget to say thank the sponsors. So um, Headley Trust has been the major sponsor of this work and uh, they sponsored the cultural heritage management project of the BIA between 2013 and 17. And uh, they were joined by other uh, trusts, including Aurelius Charitable.
Charitable Trust, the Stevenson Family Charitable Trust, the Leke Trust, the Robert Kiln Charitable Trust, and the Society of Dilitanti Charitable uh, Trust. And I also would like to extend my thanks to um, Reader, a Turkish technological company who have produced the first cell phones uh, in Turkey, uh, and they provided us the mini VR glasses, which I will be mentioning more in detail soon. And for those of you who are in the uh, audience, you, you have a chance to try them if you're interested. They will be available on the desk just outside. And uh, this beautiful movie was produced by Ekin Kazan and his team. And Ekin also did uh, wonderful pictures of the, of the trail. And we are very thankful that we were able to work with that team. And last but not least, uh, Barek team, who are also here, uh, they uh, produced the wonderful design of the book and the, all those beautiful pictures were brought together in a very beautiful way, thanks to uh, all these um, friends and colleagues. And uh, I can say that the book is the product of many precious eyes, I think. So as I said at the beginning, uh, the... So this book is about Pisidiot's landscape, its archaeology, and its people, ancient and modern. Uh, I, we cannot claim that this is an academic book, but it's based on many works of different academics. Uh, I can tell you a little bit about the structure of the book. Yeah. Um, so I try to put together all this information in an interpretive style. What it means is that I, we tried to make all this academic information which was available uh, so that it could be understood by everyone so that it doesn't sound very academic. Uh, and uh, this is called in interpretive style for natural and cultural uh, heritage. Uh, I did a course on this and I know that there are some uh, students in the audience, so I, this is going to be something that I highly recommend. Uh, in, in Greece, in Elefsina, it's called the Heritage Management Organization and they did the certificate program on interpre interpretive writing on cultural and na natural heritage. Because what usually happens with all these signage, signage and uh, books written by academics for general public is that they're they have quite an academic tone, right? So this was an attempt to tone it down. I don't know if I was successful, but that was the idea. So there were some comparisons, like you don't say uh, a, a building of 11 meters high, but you say as high as a three-story building, three-story modern building, that kind of thing, to, to uh, let people visualize it without much uh, difficulty. And um, the book, uh, has sections that start with one archaeological site and ends with another archaeological site. We talk about that one site in particular. We, I uh, explain the monuments and the properties of the archaeological site. And then there are some boxes, we call them little boxes, within the book that talk about the contemporary life or the intangible heritage or things that are uh, that matter right now within that region. So they can uh, be different um, issues. And this is mostly coming from an anthropological and ethnographic um, project that we conducted in the same region called Living Amid the Ruins, which I will not go into detail, but that also comes from the work of specialists working in that region. The root descriptions, as you can see in the contents of the book, for each single uh, section were written by Unification. And we have, I will be showing some more examples about that. Uh, and also contains information about how to visit the site when you are once inside the archaeological site. There is another section about dedicated to, to plants, especially endemic and local plants, which are found again along that route that we are describing. And this part was written by Ismail Gökhan Deniz, and I will be coming back to his work. So, um, before I move to our panel discussion, I'll do some housekeeping and I will do some practicalities. Uh, so the book is available on the BIA's website for, for sale. It's both in English and in Turkish and as a print copy and um, uh, printed uh, copy. Uh, and um, 
the um, most of the cost of the book goes to shipping costs, unfortunately, if you are ordering it from uh, outside of Turkey or the UK. Uh, and uh, we can um, confidently say that, say that it barely uh, covers the cost of printing uh, the, the book. But uh, because we are a nonprofit uh, organization, all the revenue, if any, is raised is going to go back to cultural heritage management work of the BIA. But if you are very fond of our work, please consider making a donation and uh, please address this for the cultural heritage management uh, work of the BIA. So, um, as I said, the book was created thanks to the contributions of very many distinguished um, experts uh, and especially builds on the results of the Pisidia uh, archaeological survey. And I'm going to now pass it on to uh, Lut uh, and um, to talk about that work, and I will also take my place in the panels. Is the microphone on? Yeah. It's really me, no? <laughs> <laughs> now it's on? Okay. So uh, the BIA actually has a long-standing tradition, as many of you will know, working on routes and on roads. Uh, and um, David French, from the 1960s to the early 2000s, really published quite a lot of uh, milestones. Also some of the milestones from Pisidia. But it was only till, um, it was till Dave, uh, Stephen Mitchell actually decided that uh, Pisidia, so to the north of Pamphylia, um, deserved more attention, that it was hardly on the radar of modern scholarship. There were some uh, publications uh, from uh, Lankoronsky from the 19th century, did, but then it was basically was forgotten. And one of the reasons definitely is that ancient sources called Pisidians wild and barbaric. So obviously, people thought wild and barbaric, they will not be very cultured. So no material culture worth investigating. So once Stephen Mitchell and his team uh, started, so the CDL survey project took place from the early 1980s till 2012, so quite a few years. So it became very obvious that uh, the Pisidia was definitely part of the antique world because we found a whole network uh, of ancient cities that basically had a lifespan of more than 1,000 years, Hellenistic, Roman Imperial, uh, late antique. So a very uh, rich remains uh, in Pisidia, and these are now much better known. Well, uh, one of the elements from Pisidia, one of the remains in Pisidia that was definitely known before the Pisidia survey project is Deuxième Boise, which is uh, a part of the Via Sebaste, basically the uh, highway that was uh, established under um, Emperor Augustus and that connected Pamphylia with the Anandolian highlands. So that was definitely known already. But then we have all these cities with extremely well-preserved remains, cities with a very recognizable culture, cult material culture, architecture. And what is very important is that most of the, the population now lives elsewhere. There are villages around, but they are, most of the, these cities are located rather high up in the mountains. So the present day population is much lower. As a result, everything is still there. It's very well preserved, as you can see here in Ariasos. Uh, third, third century arch standing basically completely. And that is not the only example. These are the walls from, um, city walls from Petrelisos, second century BC. This is one of the towers, also two, more than two stories preserved. And there are other examples. Uh, so therefore it's a pleasure working there. It's also very beautiful. So the, the survey established uh, not only this uh, network of cities, but we also did uh, in several of these cities, also the territory of the cities was, um, was surveyed. And there again, I mean, a wide variety of remains, a high density, much more dense than the population today and very well preserved. However, unfortunately, every year, more and more illicit digging 
So it was very obvious that we had to try and do something because the remains, most of the remains are really remotely located and therefore not sufficiently protected. So the BIA thought that it would probably be a good idea to have a look at whether uh, a project involving ecotourism could be uh, established, uh, including the local communities because they are the first guardians. And that is when Shilai started her work with the BIA and she and other people, but uh, started working on the Bzidia survey. Uh, no, 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 not a survey, the heritage trail. Thank you so much, Lut. Uh, and I am going to pass it on to Umit with this photo from Bodrum Kaya from uh, Pednelisos. And uh, I haven't talked much about the trail itself because I wanted to ask you, what is the Pisidia Heritage Trail? How did we do it? And what was the field work like? And your experience in all of this, uh, I would be very happy. <laughs> Thank you, Ushulai. Uh, of course, when Ushulai first uh, came and uh, said, we're gonna do a cultural heritage management, uh, frankly, I had very little idea about cultural uh, management, you know, uh, kind of the old generation and lots of new things are coming up and sometimes these are not real things you know people are just doing things so but when she told me about the idea uh, and it was very appealing because uh, since 1980s uh, me and my wife who is also a professor in archaeology we were already uh, visiting all these archaeological sites in 1980s 90s uh, and it's, it was a beautiful area and like Lut Hanum said, uh, it never deserved, uh, it never uh, actually had uh, the attention that it, it really deserved. Uh, maybe it's not that good to have lots of tourists uh, in an area, and I don't think that will happen because uh, there is no sea in the Pisidian uh, territories, but it's a beautiful uh, territory. Uh, and when she came with the idea, of course, we know those sites. Uh, we knew some of the past because since 1990s, we were taking uh, foreign groups uh, for hiking, uh, both on the what now they call the Likin Trail and also on the Pisidian uh, Trail. Uh, we were already doing these, but the idea here was to connect the ancient sites to each other and if possible with ancient uh, routes. Uh, to do that, I mean, I think we have a trail of 350 kilometers, but maybe we, three of us, maybe we walk uh, 1,000 kilometer uh, because not always uh, we could find the routes. In 1980s, it was much easier because there were nomads and shepherds living in the mountains. But in 2010s, there were very few people. The old trails were all, almost gone with bushes and so forth. Uh, there were no, no one to ask to. So uh, several cases, we walked all day and, and realized that that is not a trail and it's not going anywhere. So we had to, <laughs> for an alternative <laughs> road. So uh, uh, we worked more than seven uh, years on this, on the field work, of course. But uh, as uh, Ushulai uh, said, Every moment was fun uh, because we all love uh, nature. We do a lot of camping in order to uh, find new routes. We indeed found uh, nice uh, trails. Uh, and I'm happy that in social media, I'm following that people are really walking this uh, trail now. And more people walk, of course, it will be maintained. And as uh, should I said, uh, the ruins would be uh, guarded in a way because people are going in the weekends or visiting those ancient cities. Now they know these places at least. Thank you, Ushilayan. Before I take the microphone from you, can you tell what this is? And oh, this is <laughs> yes. Uh, actually, I had a friend from uh, the high school uh, and in 1990s, when we were going to open our first travel agency, we wanted to do this as our logo, but somehow we couldn't do it. Uh, when we did the Pisidia Cultural Heritage Trail, uh, we said, let's not use the international uh, white and red uh, because that's everywhere. Let's use something peculiar to Pisidia. And this is a 
actually a shield from uh, Termesos. Uh, the Pisidian shield and spear is very popular. Almost in every Pisidian city, you see this. So we pick this. This means go straight. If there is one arrow to the right, means go right. If there is one arrow to the left, it means go left. And in the book, they uh, it is well explained, I assume. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and I wanted to end this with your uh, favorite uh, spot on the Pisidia Heritage Trail, or maybe all around uh, Anatolia, I do not know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> this is the theater of uh, Termesos. And um, I mean, we could do all these trails um, and uh, you can find uh, the route descriptions written by uh, Umit uh, on the Pisidia Heritage Trail website. Uh, and you can download it as a, P as a, it's a free uh, PDF copy. Uh, and there are some wonderful maps that accompany uh, the, the route descriptions. And these maps came to life thanks to Michele's work. And my, my orientation skills are really bad. And I always rely on my phone so that I don't turn left when I'm supposed to be going right. When I leave a shop, I mean, it's that bad. And uh, even Pisidia, the, Phone coverage is horrible. So it was thanks to Umit and Michele that we found our way. If it was me, we, I would be still looking for my uh, orientation uh, on the mountains. So I would like to now pass the microphone to Michele to tell us his experience of how he put together this GPS points and how he created that recording and how the field work was for him. Thank you. Well, the first thing is uh, I was uh, a work of love. It was, um, <clears throat> you know, we spent four months together overall, I think more. And as uh, Umid said, we walked almost a thousand kilometers and uh, it was a great group. And uh, it was in a very beautiful place. It's probably the most beautiful place in Turkey. And um, it still is, even if, uh, as Ushula says, there is a lot of new constructions and there is quarries and this, but it is a very, very beautiful place. And, uh, you know, just camping in front of Bodrum Kaya or, you know, walking through the biggest canyon in the world. I mean, that, that, is, that really uh, changed my life in a way. And uh, doing this together and camping at night and eating very good steaks. In the <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it was great. Um, but uh, coming, you know, more to the, the scientific side of things, um, if Umit was the pathfinder, I was the path recorder in a way, because uh, Umit, of course, has more than 20 years of experience in the region. And even if he didn't know the exact path from A to B, he was like a mountain goat. He would smell, you know, the faint traces. And then in, in time, I also realized that I could also see some of them. I mean, not to, to his extent, but, you know, it was great ha the, the, the ability that he had to, to find the hidden path. But so I was always going behind him and with the GPS and with the, with the notebook, marking all of these trails. And actually what I tried to do is um, not only to mark it on a GPS so that other people could do it, but also try to, to note you know, important points or natural viewpoints or, you know, water sources or the, the presence of a camp for, for, for the night. So all of this ended up being a very long and large uh, file uh, that uh, we also sharing on the Pisidia Heritage uh, Trail website, uh, free of charge, of course. And uh, this also will help people, you know, not only to put, you, you can put it in the GPS, you can put it on uh, uh, phone applications, and that will also help you in, in the experience. And what, I, what we tried to do was actually to, to help a tracker from different generations, right? So there is the, the description of the, of the trail in, in a hard copy, if you want. Uh, there are the, 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 um, the shield and spear signs on the trail for people that are really passionate and they know how to navigate in the nature, but also there is a GPS points for literally everybody, but especially the new generation that only looks at the, the, their phone. So this was the aim. And uh, actually we know from other people's experiences that people get lost 
in 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 these mountains right so it is always good to bring all of the possible tools that you have at your disposition and actually this was also a guiding um thought of of us you know let's not have people get lost here because it's beautiful but it also can be dangerous at times um it's not like in the us where you get lost for months and months but still uh, it, it can be dangerous so, so the, the, the overarching idea was let's make this a viable uh, and beautiful experience yes <laughs> <laughs> and yes, it, it was great because uh, people in Pisidia, um, they're very far from, from you know, the, the mundane. Uh, of course, they also go to Antalya, maybe for summer, for, for holidays or for the weekend. But there is a different sense of self and a different sense of place that they have. And uh, it's very far away from, from the bustle and hustle of Antalya. And so it, it is a very nice place away from from uh, from the modern world. Thank you so much. Um, there is one more contribution that we I mean we would have liked to have in the panel, but uh, due to personal reasons he couldn't join. Uh, Ismail Gökhan Deniz um, from Akdeniz University, uh, who did the work on the endemic and um, plans and local plans along the, um, along the trail. And now here you see him uh, that he's uh, with a wild strawberry tree. He did teach us how to uh, differentiate uh, those trees, but I don't think that we are still able to do that. But he was the one who wrote uh, the section on the plants in the in the book, and he also made the beautiful photographs. Uh, but one of them you can see here. This one is called Vargit. Uh, so it represents the time when people have to come down uh, to the lower land from Yaila. So it is it uh, appears during during that time, and there are so many different stories that he mentions uh, in the book uh, and uh, he puts, puts them together in a very nice way. So not all of them are endemic, but some of them have these kinds of uh, local meanings and significance, which was very important uh, for us to record. Uh, so you will be able to also uh, hear his uh, stories. Now we also have an important component of uh, this book, which, is, which are the 3D reconstructions. Uh, and we have uh, Simon Young who had uh, this um, app and uh, we, we are reconstructions, 3D reconstructions produced. We have a short video of him for five minutes. So he will be joining, not live, but with a video. Hello everyone. My name is Simon Young and I am the founder and chief content officer at Lithodomus. It is my absolute pleasure to take you through some of the details of our collaboration with the British Institute at Ankara for the creation of 3D reconstructions of ancient sites for the Basidia Heritage Trail project. During my time as an Endeavour Award Fellow at the British Institute during the academic year of 2015 and 16, I was fortunate to make the acquaintance of Dr. Ludgard van der Poot, and the now Assistant Director, Ishalai Gursu. My PhD was on public architecture, with a focus on its placement, motivations for its construction, and its role in the cityscape. In order to gain a better understanding of the reception of this public architecture, I developed 3D virtual reality reconstructions of major public buildings in the cities I focused on. During this process, and experiments, I was fortunate enough to undertake on-site tests. And during this time, I had some wonderful conversations with Ishalai about the potential to incorporate this, at that time, new technology with the cultural pro heritage project that Ishalai was working on at the time, the walking trail. After completing my PhD, I decided to start my own company, Lithodomus. Lithodomus specializes in creating high quality 3D reconstructions of ancient and heritage sites and historical monuments. From 2017 to 2019, we at Lithodomus collaborated with the British Institute at Ankara to create reconstructions of ancient cities in Pisidia, Ariassos, Doshimed Boaza, 
Meli, Pednelisos, Selge, and Sia. Our team followed a specific me methodology, starting with determining the points from which the city would be viewed and the time period. From there, researchers gathered and loaded into a GIS program and digital draft blockouts were created using a 3D computer program. Once the overall layout of the city was determined, as well as the level of detail required for each asset, we began working on individual assets such as buildings and structures. At each stage of development, we tested the models in virtual reality to ensure they were accurate and realistic. And when we felt that the quality had progressed enough, we shared our work with subject experts from the Institute who provided detailed feedback and a process of correction, refinement and improvement ensued. After the 3D environments had been vetted and quality controlled for accuracy, they were loaded onto a variety of deployment devices, such as onto the Google Play Store and the iOS App Store for iPhone. We also prepared this for publication to be viewed with Google Cardboard glasses. Before this book launch today, the reconstructions we created in collaboration with the Institute have been presented at various exhibitions and conference proceedings around the world, including the UNESCO Digital Heritage Lab, Heritage Istanbul, and the AIA, the American Institute of Archaeology, annual conference in San Diego. We are thrilled that the reconstructions will now reach an even wider audience through the publication of this wonderful book. We would like to thank the director of the British Institute of Ankara, Ludgard van der Poot, the assistant director, Ishalai Gursun, Stephen Mitchell, who uh, provided invaluable um, and advice and, and, and feedback, and of course the team at the BIAA for their partnership, support and wonderful encouragement in this project. And of course to the Lithodomus team, in particular Dr. Emanuele Casagrande and our lead artist at the time, Bernardo Eracci, for their hard work and dedication to this project. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the rest of the presentation and thank you. Thank you, Simon. <laughs> yes, I'm going to talk about how the how it works now. Uh, so um, you can um, download Pisidia Heritage Trail app, uh, which you can find on Google Play and uh, iOS, I, oh, Apple Store, Apple Store. Uh, so if you write uh, Pisidia Heritage Trail, it's going to come up. Uh, and uh, you can um, use the application without the glasses because it gives information and it also provides uh, a 2D of the 3D reconstructions. Uh, so you can look around from the screen of your phone. However, if you want to have a better experience, you can uh, try it with uh, Oculus uh, glasses or mini VR glasses that you can also have a look here. And that is the uh, mini VR glasses are coming with the book. Uh, and uh, that is uh, thanks to our sponsorship with uh, Reader. They uh, procured all the mini VR glasses for us. But as far as I know, you can also find the uh, Google Cardboard glasses and there are even do-it-yourself kind of videos on YouTube to do your own um, uh, 3D um, glasses. Uh, I'm not very familiar with the terminology, so I'm always looking for confirmation that I am saying the right things. But uh, of course, Simon, being the expert, has explained this uh, very much in detail. But one of the reasons why we wanted to integrate this technology was because we keep talking about how nature is beautiful in Pisidia, but it's also quite remote. So we didn't uh, rely on uh, normal information panels. So this this work has been done with zero intervention to the sites. So we want, but we still had a lot of information that we wanted to share. That so while we were thinking about how to share that information with the visitor, then we came up with this idea of uh, using an app and using this uh, 3D reconstructions. And again, it was thanks to the work of uh, Lut and Steven in the region, because they were the ones who provided a lot of detailed drawings and maps 
uh, and the plans uh, of the sites, which enabled Simon to work on them and create these uh, reconstructions. As I said, they are um, freely accessible uh, on, on these platforms. Um, I, I think I'm going to try to conclude now, uh, and then there are some questions uh, regarding the practicalities uh, and how to access the book and things like that I see on the chat. And I'm going to also open the floor for your questions if you have any. Uh, um, for those of us who are in the room, uh, we are going to invite you for a small um, reception afterwards. And I'm sorry for the ones on the on, on Zoom, uh, but next time, let's say. And um, so, um, I think, as, as Michele was uh, very well putting it together, I think this was uh, a very good uh, teamwork, and we walked this uh, all this road uh, together, and that's why I think it it kind of created this um, very emotional bonding for uh, for all of us for for the region, and that is what we would like to convey. And um, and thanks to uh, all my colleagues here, I think we are um, able to. Uh, do that and as uh, you see uh, some some pictures from our our field work and uh, I was thinking about this a um, couple of uh, weeks ago that when I first asked Umit uh, do you think we can connect these sites to each other by walking and he said yes that was the 15th of October in 2015 and when the book was printed and it reached my desk it was exactly the same day in 2022 but I'm like oh, okay uh, there is a message here so uh, it took us seven years uh, a lot of roads and a lot of um, you know losing our uh, path and then finding it back but there is one uh, there, there are two more people that we really have to thank here one is Kazem Chitin uh, he really did find us wherever we were, even though the instructions were not very clear, like Diana Yere. So the only <laughs> bit of information that he gave us was quite vague. Uh, but he always, we, we, we are all here and alive. So he managed to find us. Uh, and we also walked uh, most of the time with Melike Gül. And uh, it was always a pleasure. And uh, her uh, very um, catching questions also made it very uh, mind um opening for us. And a um, couple of uh, more pictures and a couple of more people that I would like to thank actually the uh, Stephen Mitchell that um, both uh, Simon and Lut mentioned, but he was very generous with sharing his information. I mean, he agreed to come uh, with me to these sites several times and I filmed, filmed him several times. And uh, if you have a look at the website, you are going to see some videos and you are going to say, see that the quality of the videos are changing because we are learning more along the way. The first one is like, somebody is uh, walking around and there are goats and all these things. And the, the, the latest ones are getting more, more prof prof professional. Uh, so I, I have to say that, uh, yes, this was a work of, quite a lot of years uh, and I'm very grateful for everyone who contributed. I know the list is very long uh, and um, uh, it's on the book. I um, try to thank everyone in the book in detail, but I'm really very grateful uh, that uh, we, we walked uh, this trail all together and we will continue uh, to walk it so that we can create uh, so social and economic benefits for the communities that are shrinking day by day uh, around these, these sites that is uh, uh, our main uh, motivation and uh, main goal. So I think um, Stephen and Lut introduced me uh, to Pisidia and then uh, uh, Umit, uh, we, with Umit we went to the sites and then uh, Michele joined and now we are all missing Pisidia uh, on the same, same level. And yeah, this is our like final uh, rock star uh, closing. <laughs> Closing picture where we are at Ted Nelisos watching sunset, uh, and um, uh, we, we will be very happy to take your questions. But the last, because I started with a nice video, and I'm going to close with a nice video, which is like 30 seconds. But uh, we have to go to Köprülü Canyon this time. So, if anyone's like the music.
do we have any questions from the from the audience here? Please. Uh, I have to give the microphone. Come on. Um, first of all, thank you for the great presentation. I think it's safe to say that most people are planning their summer trips according to the <laughs> trekking trail right now. I'm, I'm doing it right now. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, what kind of communication you had with the local communities and what was uh, their feedback on your, um, your work, if they had a detailed information about that. Uh, I didn't mention it very much in detail, but we did um, another project called Living Amid the Ruins, and that was about the local communities. Because, to be honest, we started with this idea. Okay, we are going to do a trail uh, because we have a lot of information about the archaeological site, and this is going to be good for the communities because it's going to create economic and social benefits. And then at some point, I started questioning myself, like, oh... Uh, did we ask the communities and who defined these so social and economic benefits? So even though uh, I said I, I, we started, we had already started the trail, we designed another uh, project and we went back to the communities because we were already in contact. As Umit was saying, there were not that many people around anymore because these villages, they are still there, but they are mostly abandoned and uh, the populations are aging. But uh, we still had um, um, some people to talk to, and they described what they expected from the trail. And, and luckily, nobody said we don't want a trail because that would have been a little bit of a, a, you know, a bad start for us. Uh, however, some communities were more interested in getting social benefits, and some were more interested in getting uh, economic benefits. And we are talking about villages which are pretty close to each other. And they, to an uneducated eye, maybe they seem exactly the same, but one of them has a forest a status so they can cut the trees and uh, get uh, income out of that. So they rely on that revenue. And they're like, well, we don't need any income, but you know what we need? We, we would love to have some phone coverage because our, uh, in our village, none of the operators work and we suffer from that. So if there are more tourists coming to the village, and if they are going to visit those sites, then uh, Turkcell has to do something about it and they are going to make sure that there is coverage in our village. And that was a very innovative way of uh, using our project that didn't come to our minds, but that was something that was sought uh, after by, by the communities. Does that answer your question? Uh, let's get one uh, couple of questions, I think, to, to Umit here, uh, because... Um, uh, to Mehmet Dereli's question, Mehmet, they please do get in touch uh, um, with us. We are going to make sure that you can purchase uh, the book and we are sorry about the, this experience. Uh, you can email us and we will find a way. Uh, William Park, uh, will there be organized hikes after this uh, coming May trip, which he cannot join? And also a follow-up question. For self-guided walk, uh, walks, are there hotel, restaurants, shops that, uh, that are close to the trail? Where would hikers sleep and eat? Uh, Pisidia Cultural Heritage Trail is not like the Likian uh, Trail. Uh, logistics are difficult, as Michele was uh, pointing out. Uh, it can be dangerous because uh, sometimes you have to walk for several hours without seeing any uh, modern facilities or a bus or a minibus. So one has to do his homework very well before going on the Pisidian uh, trail or do it in smaller uh, parts. Uh, for organized groups, after we finished this uh, project with, with Shulaya and Mikhele and Lutanum, we, we started to uh, make or, uh, organized tours. And you know what? Who was the first person who bought it online? Stephen Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do it for Turkish people and foreigners. Uh, but during the pandemic, of course, everything uh, stopped. Now, this May, we will start again. But we usually do one trip in the spring, one trip in the uh, fall. Uh, but for those who want to do it by themselves, they have to really uh, work on the logistics. It's always better to have your camping equipment for 
so that you can take longer uh, distances with that. So just, just to add something, actually, um, in, in the GPS points, uh, what I did try to put is always, you know, uh, places where you can camp for the, for the evening or places where you can water. And is that, is that you know, water that is stay there all the time or just uh, in the winter and this sort of thing. So in a, in a sense, uh, it's 350 kilometers. It's hardly thinkable that you will do this all at once. Uh, but there are also points where you can get there with a dolmush and then you maybe a couple of days, two, three days until the next uh, uh, dolmush uh, station. <coughs> Before I take the microphone back, uh, does the heritage city heritage lab intersect the PK or um, something? Uh, it doesn't, uh, but actually we did not think about it, uh, but constantly became that way that it's connecting the Likin Trail to the St. Paul's uh, Trail, uh, not forgetting Stephen Mitchell's, uh, I have to tell this, uh, because, you know, Stephen Mitchell uh, believes that St. Paul hiked from the Shemeboaza. And when we were doing our first tour with the Turkish American and Stephen Mitchell was there, everybody asked, Stephen, did St. Paul really walk all these routes? He said, if he walked, all these areas would be Christian by now. It's <laughs> <laughs> funny. <laughs> uh, the, the best time for hiking the trail, I think, is like uh, March, not March, but April, May, June, but not later than that. Uh, and then October can be tricky because it usually it usually rained while we were there, but November, December is also uh, very uh, pleasant. Uh, so there was a question from, from uh, Elizabeth uh, asking about when is the best time uh, for hiking the trail. Um, and I'm coming to um, two more questions in the chat box. Uh, mobile coverage in all the areas that we walked doesn't exist, but in some there is. Uh, the app, the PCD Heritage app, also uh, works with the phone co coverage, and uh, I can say 80% of the time it, it works. However, when you're on the trail, so I'm not talking about the sites themselves, when you're walking on the trail, you cannot rely on your phone. I mean, you have to have the GPS points and a proper GPS device uh, with you, and uh, because you are going to lose the reception, uh, that's for sure. So actually, the, the only problem is uh, recharging the phone, because if you have an app on your phone where you can store your GPS points, you can use the phone. It's just a matter of maybe not finding a charging station on the way. And um, a question for all of us. Do we know the dog's breed in the picture? Kangal da herhalde, değil mi? <laughs> evet, uh, he followed us uh, when we were staying um, um, in Kozan, very close to Pednelisos. There is a Süleyman Öğretman, and we always stay in, at his place. And uh, he, the dog was hanging around there. And uh, he decided to follow us. And we couldn't change his mind because uh, it was a long way. Uh, and he came, and we couldn't put him back in the car. So we tried, we tried. But he found his way back, and we were all like waiting for the dog. <laughs> is he going? Be? And we were trying to tell him as if he was going to understand. Like, we are going to drive back. We are now walking, but somebody is going to come and pick us, pick us up. <laughs> we cannot communicate very well. <laughs> so, do we have any more questions from the audience here? Please. Uh, Sorry for my English uh, is not so good. I am from Italy. And so I just wanted to know, um, as far as I saw from, from the maps, um, the most important sites are in the area which is on the south of Pisidia, probably because there are many classical sites there. Um, I, I study ancient period and uh, I'm more interested in the area which are near the lakes region. And uh, does uh, this trail cover also these areas? Um, the, the Via Sebaste that starts from the Doceme Bogaze, uh, sorry for my Turkish as well, and uh, um, go all uh, um, through uh, Antioquia and then 
turn on the right hand side through to, to Konya. And uh, this part is also very interesting as far as I know. And, uh, and I would like to know if uh, there, there are also um, monuments, uh, possibly also more ancient than the classical sites. And, uh, and this is my question, sorry. <laughs> So apart from the beginning, so Dershima Boaza, and then uh, up to, to uh, the Dershima Boaza completely, but then the Pisidia Heritage Trail goes to the, to the east, whereas the, the um, uh, Via Sebaste continued up to Burdur, to the Burdur Lake, to Yalvach. Uh, it, did, it did pass, most definitely, on the territory of Sagalassos. The city of Sagalassos is in the Heritage Trail, but uh, it uh, passed along the edge of the territory of Sagalassos. So the trail is further to the east than what the, um, than what it's Via Sebas said it. Then afterwards, once it's in the Anatolian Highlands, it went also to the east to uh, Iconium, uh, Konya, but that is way beyond the Pisidia Heritage Trail. So the trail focuses on the south and the west of Pisidia, and then goes up to Kremna and Sagalassos. Sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to add a little thing that we also uh, did try our best to find path on ancient roads. And actually for me specifically it was a very beautiful experience, you know, to, to, to walk on those stones uh, that, you know, many other people before us walked. So we always tried our best to keep, he, he did most <laughs> <laughs> to find ancient roads. Yeah, we were screaming and shouting when there's a milk, there's a milk, there's a milk. Do we have any other questions uh, from the room? <laughs> I'm looking at the questions from the Zoom as well. Uh, I think we answered everything. Um, so I am going to thank uh, the BIA team because they are great. They organized everything. Uh, and uh, I'm going to especially thank Hakan Tarhan and Özlem Bashtoğan who are here and helping us with all the organization. And Özlem is uh, showing me like uh, if, if there is anyone that wants to buy the copy of the book, they are available here for sales. And also if you're interested in the VR uh, glasses and if you would like to try it, find Hakan because he is the person that has the um, the um, uh, Oculus Rift and also the small glasses that we uh, just mentioned. And um, just let me check. The... There are some congratulations messages in the. Uh... And thank you. Th thank you all. Thank you all for coming. And thank you all for sharing uh, our enthusiasm uh, this evening. And thank you all for uh, showing up at, at Zoom. And um, uh, listening to us. Uh, please keep in touch and if you have any questions or any um, technical difficulties in any, any of these things, please do let us know. We are very happy to answer all the, all the questions. And I am going to uh, invite uh, our audience here for uh, a glass of wine or anything that you like. <laughs> or yes, Rekha. Uh, and uh, I am going to say Goodbye to our audience in the in the Zoom and uh, thank you for all for your attendance and uh, interest. <laughs>